Hello, welcome to Miniature Realms. My name's Stuart, and it's time for another Warlord Games Epic Battles American Civil War painting tutorial. Recently, Warlord Games very kindly sent me the Signals Tower, the Siege Mortar Battery, and the Ambulance to review. And if you haven't caught that review, you may want to catch it, and I'll pop a little link in the video now. But this video is primarily about painting the Signals Tower and the Siege Mortar Battery. I started by priming these miniatures black and then providing a zenithal highlight using white through an airbrush, mostly top down, but I'm fairly liberal with it, making sure I'm coating these sides fairly well as well. And the idea is to base coat these miniatures using a mixture of army painted speed paint, Citadel Contrast and Vallejo Express Color, using them as glazes to create a nice smooth base layer of which I can highlight up from afterwards. But by painting in this method, you can absolutely stop just with those quick painting methods without doing any highlights at all and still have a really nice tabletop finish. Now, it's been quite a long time since the last Union Epic Battles American Civil War tutorial on the channel. In fact, we almost have to go way back to the origins of the channel. I started with videos on this Warlord Games product. If you've followed those tutorials before, you may well see some slight differences with this one. I'm not 100% consistent with the way I do things. They do evolve and change over time. And definitely the paints that I use here are slightly different in some stages to those. That is because new paints have become available. Back when I recorded those original painting tutorials, there definitely weren't any express colour from Vallejo on the market. They didn't exist at that stage. And Army Painter Speed Paints have moved on to a 2.0 version now, even though most of the ones I use in this are store 1.0. Now the new doesn't necessarily trump the old. If you have followed the tutorials before and use them for your own armies, continue to use whichever ones you feel best. And when I get back to painting my own Union army, I will probably do a mix of the old and new. The uniforms vary quite a lot anyway. Now, speaking of uniforms, I just want to give a little shout out to Jeff Dugdale, who I've mentioned on painting tutorials before. He very, very kindly, quite a few months ago now, sent me a copy of his latest book, Arkansas Man, the Civil War's Universal Soldier, um, uniforms of July the 4th, 1863. Now, obviously, I won't be using these in this tutorial because these are Confederate soldiers, but I do want to give him a bit of a shout out and a thank you again for the support he has for the channel. And it's well worth checking out his books if you are interested in a little bit more detail around Civil War uniforms. They're not all colour plates. There are colour plates in them. There's lots of information about actual numbers of uniforms and types issued at certain times. So lots and lots of data there if you want a really, really crunchy history. Now, first paint I'm going to use is a new one if you've been following the old ones. This is Dwarf Skin. It's from Vallejo Express Color. It's just an alternative to using the Citadel Ranges or the Army Painter Ranges. As I said before, neither one is right or wrong. I'm just really enjoying this color right now and it goes on very smoothly. So I'm painting this on, obviously, on all the skin areas, making sure that it's enough to pull in the recesses, but not too much to obliterate the flat areas, giving this nice sort of natural shading effect you get from the these paints. Now I'm painting the siege mortar battery as well as the corpse tower all in one go. So naturally, once I finish one lot, I will move on to the next. I will speed up a lot of this video as you've already noticed, but if you see me swapping between the different miniatures, that's why it's happening. Next up, a colour that hasn't changed. I'm using Contrast Talisar Blue for all the trousers. This is a really beautiful, bright, vibrant blue. Now, what I like to do is once I've painted the base layer on, I clean my brush and then go back on just where the light would hit and take a little bit of the paint back off. And what it tends to do is give you a nice sort of worn, highlighted effect. Again, working my way around the big batch of miniatures. Now onto the jackets, I'm using Speed Paint Cloudburst Blue from Army Painter and this is one of the changes from those initial painting tutorials I did. I think from memory I mixed something because I didn't find anything I really liked that was dark enough. Though my memory is a little bit hazy now, that might be as much as two years ago. This is a really nice, rich, dark blue colour. Gets in the little recesses nicely to provide you with that, that, that shading, uh, but also leaves a little bit of natural highlight there and works very nicely if you want to highlight on top of it afterwards. 
So just taking my time here going around all the blue trackers. I'm doing the best I can to leave all the cross straps and things unpainted. The method I'm using, you get the best from going over the lighter surface. Now, if you do make any mistakes, you can always touch these up with white afterwards. I just find if I'm going to be using black or cream and bone colors and things for these straps on different bags and leather afterwards, it's easy to work from the light surface. Now for the signal flag itself, I've cracked out Contrast Blood Angels Red. It's a really nice, bright, vibrant colour. Goes lovely over in one single coat with a nice natural shadow built in there and a nice highlight as well on the lighter areas. It highlights up fantastically as well, but looks really, really good on its own. So I mentioned touching up things a little while ago. So this is model colour white grey. I'm just using it to touch where I've gone over with the blue slightly here or there, just to really get that nice fresh base layer ready for when I apply it further colours. Now there's a couple of white areas on this miniature. I'm using a mixture of Templar White and Express Medium. Any medium will do, just want to thin it slightly. If you've got the Citadel Range, Apothecary White will do a very, very similar job. And essentially what this does is provide you with a grey glaze or very, very subtle wash. And the grey sits in all of the detail and the shadows and gives you what looks like a nicely a sort of highlighted white. Now if you, you need a quite a white layer to start with to make this work and I do go back and highlight afterwards. So now I'm using Contrast Skeleton Horde and this is for the other straps and bags on the miniatures. Also I use it on the books and parchment and maps and things that they're holding and it's a nice little contrast to some of the darker colours we got at the moment. It just stands out. Again, working my way around all the miniatures, not forgetting this cheeky chap that looks like he's having a crafty smoke around the back of the signal tower. Now on to the hair and a trio of Citadel contrast paints. We've got Gore Grunter Fur, Wildwood and Nasdrag Yellow. Again, I like to open all of these pots up and they're only open for a couple of minutes because there's not much hair on the show, but open them all up and then just work my way down the lines of miniatures, changing the colour so you've not got too many with exactly the same colour hair next to each other. Don't forget to check around the backs of the hats to see if there's any visible hair and pick out any moustaches and beards. Contrast Garagak Sewer, another paint that didn't exist at the time of the original tutorials. This has become a bit of a go-to for leathers and woods and things. It's my favourite brown in their range. I decided to use it here for all of the wooden areas, which isn't very much, just on the handle of the sponge and the short section of wood that the two men are loading the ammunition into the mortar. I'm using Citadel Contrast Black Legion for all of the black leather straps. This is another new colour, I believe. I think Contrast Black Legion came out with the second wave of contrast paints, along with, like the last one, Garagak Sewer. At the time, I think it was only Black Templar. This is a slightly richer black, and not quite as thick as just painting a normal black paint on there, but definitely much more opaque, more sort of a warmer black with, with brown tones to it rather than the lighter blue. But I do tend to find that this covers nicer for these areas and stands out a little bit more. Quite a bit to work around on all of the miniatures on, on, on both sets. So you're looking at all the belts and boots and things like that. So just take your time to work your way around and make sure you haven't missed anything. For the wood on the tower itself, I'm using Saigor Brown and Garagak Sewer. And what I'm doing here is a bit of a mix. So I'm painting two or three um, big planks of wood in one colour, then a couple in another, and just allowing them to blend together a little bit while the paints are still wet, adding a little bit of water to my brush and making sure they mix together. Just wanted to provide a little bit of variety to the base tones of the wood so they don't look all exactly the same. Again, take your time, work your aim around the miniature. Don't be frightened to put the darker shades in where the wood would be darkest. Take a little bit of paint off with a wet brush to, to make it the wood look lighter in certain areas and just have some fun really with it. There's so much detail on the wood grain of the miniature that this is, this is very easy and very, very, very hard to go wrong. 
Now for the first highlight, I'm using model color flat earth here. Uh, this is dry brushed on very, very lightly. Most of the paint is taken off. I don't want to overbrush and make it too, too stark. There's enough detail on the miniature that the paint will catch. So you just kind of build up slowly in layers, do some circular motions. And this is the, the new style of dry brushes you, you, you may see quite a lot of at the moment. The style almost in the, the makeup brush things. Now, Again, build it up slowly, allow the detail itself to do the work for you. And then if you need to add more, you always can. The next highlight is beige brown from Model Color, just a slightly lighter tone than the last one we used. And again, follow the process, go back around the whole miniature, leaving some of the darker areas, so maybe a little bit less than you did on the time before. Repeating the process again, this time with model color tan earth. Again, just that tiny little bit lighter going around the miniature. This time I've been a lot, little bit more sparing, making sure that I stick to the edges and the topmost areas of the, of the miniature and just leaving those dark areas. And it's extremely simple and slowly that detail really starts to pop. And then very much optional, but I'm doing the same thing again, but this time with dark sand and being extra careful here not to cover the whole miniature and I don't want to bleach it out, but really working where the, the light would hit in certain areas. And I think it just kind of adds that really nice final stage and how simple is it to paint a bit of terrain like this. Now I'm going to use some Ranrod Blue here to start highlighting the jackets on all of the soldiers. Now, we could have stopped here, of course. We could have just left the miniatures as they were. Everything had a nice base coat using these Contrast Speed Paint Stroke Express Color. And they all look great for tabletop armies. But you can make them pop a little bit more just by adding some extra color. And that's what we're doing here. Really just applying this here to the lightest areas of the miniatures and the way the paint goes on with these contrast style paints is that it gives you a natural highlight anyway. So you can always use that to follow. You're almost tracing in over those areas. Next up is a 50-50 mix of the previous blue and Jordan turquoise. And I always mess up the pronunciation, so sorry about that. Now, again, this is just to give it a slightly lighter tone in some areas. And I'm being much more sparing here. A few thin lines here or there. Now, we're quite zoomed in here. But remember, these miniatures are very, very tiny. And it will really just draw the eye in a nice way. And once they're on the tabletop, they'll look much neater and really stand out more than they would just with the contrast on its own. Making my way through all of the miniatures, just adding to those most highlighted areas to really make them stand out. Again, not forgetting the cheeky chappy that's still having a smoke around the back. Now using that same Jordan turquoise, if you want to add any further highlights to the trousers, you can. Now just by working it away with, with a wet brush, I feel like the highlight's already a bit brighter than this. But there are some areas a little bit too dark, so I just go back and add a little line here or there just to make it stand out. Now I want to go back over that white and for that I'm going to be using some white grey for model colour. Now this paint is absolutely fantastic. Whites can be really problematic, very very chalky and hard to use. This stuff just in with a slight bit of water and it just goes on very 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 smoothly and it's perfect to work over the sort of the grey we've already got from the Templar white and medium mix and it really just makes it stand out. Repeat the process on the square in the middle of the flag itself. And then move on to flat earth from model color to start highlighting the wood areas. Now for some model color dark sand, and I use this to highlight all of those sort of beigey cream areas of the straps and the little bags at the side. Again, working your way around the miniatures, picking out all the little bits. There's quite a few bits of, of this sort of lighter color, especially with the maps and things that they're holding. And of course, old smoky around the back. A mix of colours for the hair highlights, we've got German camo medium brown, orange brown, both for model colour, and then citadel layer phalanx yellow. Just like I did for the base layers, I actually had all three paints out on the palette and just worked my way down the lines of troops. To highlight the red on the flag, I'm using layer Evil Sun Scarlet from Citadel. 
but also using the same color to paint in the little markings on the sleeves of the gunners and their collars as well. A little scale color elven gold for all the buttons on the uniforms. It's definitely one for taking your time and just doing neat little dots. To add a subtle highlight to the skin, I've opted for a mix of basic skin from model color and some medium. You can use any medium just to thin the skin color a little bit here. I find it slightly chalky and just a little bit of medium smooths it out a little bit better than water does. The gold is to be very, very subtle here. The contrast paint or the dwarf skin from Express Color in this case has already done a decent job of providing you with some natural shadow and highlight, but this just really accentuates it a little bit more and makes it pop. Now for the dark blued metal on the mortars themselves, I'm actually using a 6B pencil here and just very, very lightly running it over the, the topmost layers, just picking out a little bit where the metal would be slightly worn away. Now I'm going to do something slightly different with the basing here that I've done before. Now Geek Gaming Scenics very, very kindly sent me some of their new stuff to try out. And we have three new mixes here. The two on the left, I see the major difference seems to be the, the lightness of the green. The one on the right here seems to have slightly darker sand as well as a darker green. Now I'm using the lighter mix, the Farlight mix on the Siege Corpse Tower here. I figured that uh, this is a bit of terrain, it wouldn't matter if it was very, very different to the, to the rest of the army. I'm just applying some PVA glue here. I believe this is the way you do it. I've not used any of their base ready stuff before but um, I believe that you just apply it straight to a glued miniature. And as you'll see, this, this seems to work. So just some white PVA glue around the edge of the base of the tower and then dipping it directly in the base ready mix. Following the same method here for the mortars themselves, I decided to opt for the darkest of the mix. So that was one in the far right on the original image. Um, and this is something I'm, I quite like the look of and I may well start using it within my armies. I may use some of my original basing powders and the mixes and things as well to make it blend in. But I quite like the idea of this stuff and it's super, super easy to use and I was incredibly pleased with the results. It really couldn't have been any easier. I did pre-paint the bases with a very, very dark grey brown first. I thought if there were any gaps that showed through, then it would show through the darker colour, which seemed to make sense. But other than that, the stuff just went on really, really well, dried very, very quickly. And I was very impressed. So thank you very much, Wayne, for, for sending those over. I know these are specifically designed for smaller scale miniatures. So looking at 15 millimeter and below. So I think that's why he wanted a few people to, to try these out and give them some feedback. So apply a little black rim to the base as you can see that basing mix has gone on really really nice and evenly. And there we have it you see the slightly lighter mix there to the side I didn't do the one from the middle um, but they're both very very pleasing I think there's um, maybe room for a little bit more green in there but they're, they're pretty good and I will definitely use them in the future. Um, it's a bit hard now I've already started both these armies but I am tempted to next time I start an army in this small scale start using this. You see here I'm adding some tufts, these aren't Geek Game Seamix tufts, um, but I wanted to see how well they do and then the colour of tufts that I used in the original painting tutorials for these armies. And I think just adding a little tuft here or there really, really adds to it. So whether you're using Geek Game Seamix tufts or some from another manufacturer, I think the, the combination of these sort of basing mixes here and tufts would be a really, really fantastic look. Now obviously there's loads of space on these bases uh, if you're using a normal stand of, of troops and things like that you may well find that you don't need to add the tufts afterwards but I wanted to fill in the space a little bit here but all in all I'm pretty happy with them they painted up very nicely I still very much like the miniatures as I said in the previous review this is a obviously a fairly quick paint job on these a tabletop paint job but they are very very small miniatures but I definitely have my head turned by these this ready mix basing definitely saves a lot of time over the methods I had before. Though I feel I might end up mixing the two methods together and, and, and having a really varied basing sort of set for an army. So I'll be really interested to know what you think of the, the paint jobs and the, the new colours I've chosen. If you were someone who have watched the previous tutorials before, what you think of the miniatures if you haven't already seen the review before and what you think of the, the basing material there was a little bit of an extra to the video that wasn't originally planned, but it just seemed to time very, very nicely with what I was painting next. So again, thank you very much, Wayne. 
The only minor criticism I'd have now, having built and painted them, would be with the course tower themselves, just the, the, the men on the top. Apart from the guys sitting, we've got very, very, very tiny feet, so very small contact areas, probably too small to pin, that you're gluing directly on top of the, the resin. They do glue, they're going to fall off. Um, so I would have probably looked at doing it differently, maybe leaving some of the, the metal um, sprue frame on the, the bottom of the, the miniature and drilling in maybe. Um, but um, I can see me knocking them off a few times if I was, especially if I was carrying around for gaming. It was really nice returning to Epic Battles American Civil War. I know I have done a few times this year, but uh, I also am aware that the videos for them don't come as quick and as fast as other things on the channel at the moment. That's always the way when uh, you've done a lot of videos for a particular topic or so, you kind of run out of topics and things to keep people interested. But I will come back and do more tutorials and things for them in the future, no doubt, as I will with Pike and Shot and the Napoleon and Waterloo range as well. If you happen to be finding this channel for the first time through these painting tutorials and you're interested in these miniatures, do look at the back catalogue of all the Epic Battle stuff. A lot of the videos are a lot older than this one, so not quite as well edited or um, quite as concise as some of the painting tutorials are a little bit long. But um, if you can sit through them, then uh, more props to you. If you have enjoyed the video, please do give us a like. It really helps me out. And if you haven't already, please consider subscribing to the channel. Thank you very much for watching. Take care and I'll catch you soon.